The following program is brought to you by Whiteman TV. So thank you everybody for coming to meet the candidates this evening, um, put on by the Hanover Chamber of Commerce. I am the president of the chamber, Erin Aldridge. You'll also see me at Meridian if you recognize me. Um, I just wanted to quickly pass it over um, to our MC for the evening who's going to run through everything with you and the rules and how the question and answers are going to work. And uh, without further ado, I will um, bring you over to Ryan Craig. Thanks, Ryan. Thank you very much, Aaron. Uh, welcome, everybody. Uh, I've got a few announcements and then we'll get right into it. So the goal tonight is to hear as much from the candidates as possible. But I want to start by thanking the committee members of the Hanover Community Players for sponsoring this event. They do have water for sale for a dollar. It's available in the lobby and they will circulate throughout the theater this evening uh, for sales during the evening if you do want water. Also a thank you to Whiteman for filming this event. Uh, earlier this evening name tags were drawn for the starting order and table cards have been placed in the order drawn. Uh, I'd like to thank you the audience for attending. Um, this is probably one of the most important uh, rights and I would suggest obligations we have as citizens so the fact that you're interested uh, is, is really a great sign for the Town of Hanover. So thank you for your time this evening and coming to listen to what the candidates have to say. As you arrived, you were given the option of taking paper and pen in order to ask a question. Uh, questions may be addressed to candidates for council, mayor, or deputy mayor. Uh, please raise your hand between speakers for question pickup by members of the Hanover Chamber uh, Executive. We hope to include your question, uh, but we'll pose our final question just prior to 9.15 with the goal that everyone is out of here uh, by 9.30. We are pleased to give each candidate a two-minute platform speech, so in the order that they are seated. Their time will be closely monitored by the Director of the Chamber. One bell at a minute 45, two bells at the two-minute mark when, that, when their time is up. And then constant ringing after that so that uh, they just, they're done. So. Well, I'm pretty confident they will they'll respect the, respect the time constraints for all the candidates so that everyone gets an equal opportunity. Um, we would also like to acknowledge our trustees running at present time. Uh, they're going to come up and introduce themselves first. They won't be taking other questions. Uh, I'll do that in one minute. Uh, each candidate has been asked to respect the time limits. We've asked them to answer the questions that have been either sent in before or that you have already been sending to us. If they do feel they've answered the question though and they still have time left, they're free to, you know, to speak about whatever they want uh, within the time limit, that's completely up to them. Uh, and following, the plat following their speeches, we will have a question period for questions provided and gathered. Candidates' names will be drawn and one question will be directed to three or four candidates. Uh, responses will be limited to one minute and again, they'll be timed and stopped by the bell. Uh, Yes, we're going to try to ensure everyone gets to ask the same number of questions, and uh, and I think that's it for now. If anything else comes up, I will I will do that. So, before we get into the candidates for mayor, deputy mayor, and council, I would like to call on uh, Robin Garvey, uh, who has been acclaimed as the Bruce Gray Catholic District School Board Rep, English separate, just to say a few words. She'll have a, a minute to introduce herself. It's on. Is it on? Okay. My name is Robin Garvey Wiseman, and I'm very grateful for the opportunity to serve as your Catholic trustee. I myself have five kids, ranging from JK all the way to university, so I have a pretty strong handle on what's happening in the schools. I have a heart for kids, and I believe every student can succeed with the right supports, resources, and encouragement. Catholic education is about nurturing the whole child, body, mind, and spirit. The most important thing we can do for our children is to teach them how truly remarkable they are, each one created with a divine purpose and God-given talents and abilities. If we can achieve this while equipping them with a strong academic foundation, what incredibly resilient youth they will be. As your Catholic trustee, I will continue to do all I can to be a strong voice and an advocate of our students. Thank you very much and enjoy your evening. Thanks, Robin. Uh, 
And the other trustee joining us this evening is Tracy Shouse Atkinson, trustee candidate for Blue Water District School Board English Public. And Tracy is going to have a minute to introduce herself. Good evening, everyone. My name is Tracy Shouse Atkinson. I was born and raised here in Hanover. I currently now live in Durham. I have two children who now attend John Diefenbaker Secondary Senior School. Excuse me, that was secondary when I went. <laughs> Um, currently, I sit on the Special Education Advisory Committee at Blue Water, and I am now the Vice Chair of that committee. I find it very passionate for our children with special needs. They all deserve to be treated and, and taught in their own way that, to their capacity. Every child can learn. They just need to be given the opportunity to learn how they can, can learn. And sometimes it's a challenge. But anyway, it, it can be done. I've seen it. I've volunteered for 10 years here at Spruce Ridge and um, in the special education department to helping them with math and English and science. And they're a joy. I call them delightful learners. And, and currently, I am the breakfast coordinator at Spruce Ridge. I've been there for 10 years. The children say to me, Mrs. A, when are you ever going to graduate from Spruce Ridge? Well, I don't know if I am. <laughs> I, I feed, believe it or not, 300 to 325 children per day at Spruce Ridge. So I'm there every day. I see the demand and I know the needs of our children. Now I don't pretend to have all the answers, but I'm willing to take your questions and find you the answer in a short and reasonable length of time. And I look forward to serving you as Blue Waters Public English Trustee. Thank you very much and enjoy your evening. Thank you very much. Um, I should just say, I, I don't have any concerns about this, but with this crowd, but it's worth saying anyways, these, the, all these candidates, um, whether they end up being successful or not, uh, uh, deserve, deserve our, our gratitude. And, and it's really important that for, to have a strong council, to have strong candidates, regardless of who's successful. So uh, it's very important this evening that we're here to gather information hear from the candidates so you get a flavor on who you want to vote for. We would ask you to be respectful, uh, whether you necessarily agree or disagree with their positions throughout the evening. Uh, again, you know, it's not easy public speaking and they're already giving a lot of their time to do this. So I'm not concerned about it, but would just ask that we be respectful regardless of how we feel about the positions of the candidates. So with that, let's get into the introductions. Essentially, each candidate will have two minutes to tell you who they are and anything else they want about you. So we're going to start, uh, the names have been drawn randomly, but we're gonna start with the, uh, the, the two positions for mayor and we're gonna call on Sue Patterson first to come up and speak to you for two minutes. Mr. Chairman, ladies and gentlemen, fellow candidates, my name is Sue Patterson and I am running for the position of mayor. Hanover has been my home for over 50 years. Prior to retirement, I spent 14 years working at the Hanover and District Hospital Foundation and 16 years in administration at PH Foods. First elected to Hanover Council in 2003, I served as a councillor for three terms and it has been my distinct honor to have served as mayor of our town for the past four years. With 15 years of municipal experience and prior work experience, I have the knowledge, understanding, and commitment to lead and represent Hanover as your mayor. My vision for Hanover is to strengthen our position as a strong regional center and enrich our sense of place. I want people to be proud to call Hanover their home, a place where people work to enjoy retirement, a place where services, recreation, and arts and culture complement our great lifestyle. Hanover's largest challenge is the job economy, which is interdependent on many issues. The need for a skilled and efficient labor force is a significant key to the success of retaining our current businesses and attracting new ones. With that in mind, it is vital that our housing market offer affordable and attainable housing. And in order to grow, we need development lands, so it is crucial our growth should be steady, manageable, and planned. 
We must always be financially secure while building our future to keep the unique identity of our town. I respectfully ask for your support and your vote. Thank you. Thank you, Sue. Next, we're going to call on the other candidate for the position of mayor, Mary Winkler. Good evening. 17 per cent tax increase over the last four years is not acceptable. I am Mary Winkler and I'm running to be the mayor of Hanover. I have lived and breathed Hanover my entire 60 years. I look out and I see many people that I know. There has been an increase in the general town levy that is not acceptable. We also must consider the current council voted themselves a benefit package. That vote in council was a tie. My opponent broke that tie in favor of the package. Only after there was such public discontent was this rescinded. The town should not be involved in the operation of the Blue Water radio station. And our town is growing. In fact, actually bursting at the seams. I believe I have the connections to work with our neighbors to the east. Together, we can consider partnerships for the betterment of both municipalities. My vision is simple. It is about common sense. Increase growth, maintain financial health, maintain the integrity of our community, attract industry, business, and visitors to Hanover. I've been talking with many people, and there are concerns. Transparency, open, clear communication, and public engagement, such as with the voting process and benefits of officials. Issues need to be investigated thoroughly and consideration made if and where needed. The work is important. I have the capacity, understanding, and time to make a strong contribution. Is it cut off already? <laughs> anyway, please vote. Please vote for the team that will represent you. And please vote Mary Winkler. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Mary. Now I'm going to call on Selwyn Hicks, who is running for the position of Deputy Mayor. Good evening, everyone. My name is Selwyn Hicks, and I'm your current Deputy Mayor seeking re-election. I want to thank the Chamber for organizing this event and all of you for attending this evening. I've served on council for 12 years, the last four as your deputy mayor. I'm a lawyer. My wife Barbara and I are the owners of Hicks & Hicks Professional Corporation with offices in Hanover and Walkerton. Now my wife will tell you that I'm the second Hicks in Hicks & Hicks, and sadly over the years I've come to accept that. Prior to attending law school, I was a social worker and a consultant with two royal commissions. I studied social work at Centennial College and obtained a law degree and an MBA at the University of Windsor. From my community service, I received the Lieutenant Governor's Award of Distinction and was proclaimed Metropolitan Toronto Citizen of the Year in 1991-92. I'm the past chair of the Bruce Gray Child and Family Services, formerly the CAS, and a board member with Launchpad, which is uh, our youth skills training center, and I'm a member of the Economic Development Committee. I've been asked to respond to two questions in my opening remarks. First, what is my vision for Hanover and its growth in the future? Well, my vision is that Hanover will continue to serve as a regional hub and a place where you can have small town charm while enjoying big city amenities. The second question I've been asked to respond to is, what do I feel is Hanover's largest challenge which I would like to help overcome? Well, that's really easy. 
The largest challenge, in my view, facing Hanover is that it needs to grow, but has insufficient lands to serve its future needs. In short, we are bursting at the seams. Once again, my name is Selwyn Hicks, and I'm seeking re-election as your Deputy Mayor. Thank you. Thanks, Selwyn. I'd now like to call on Bill Roberts, who is also running for the position of Deputy Mayor. <clears throat> Good evening. Thank you to the Chamber for hosting this event tonight. And thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for uh, coming this evening. And my grandson, Harrison, for coming as well. Um, my name is Bill Roberts, and I'm running for Deputy Mayor for the Town of Hanover. As a proud citizen of Hanover for 22 years, I decided to run for Deputy Mayor because I'm concerned about the increase in Hanover expenditures over the last number of years. I believe my over 30 years experience in municipal government from 1979 to my retirement in 2010 will serve the town well in dealing with issues that come before council. I served as CAO clerk for Hanover from 1997 to 2008. The main issue I'd like to highlight in my campaign is that the only tax funded expenditures the Town Council has control over are up 7.2% in 2018 and 21.5% for the term of this Council 2015 to 2018. The 2018 figure and the total percentage increase are as shown in the Director of Corporate Services report and the budget minutes for each of those years. My goal is to reduce expenditures so that Hanover ratepayers receive fair value for their tax dollars. Another issue occurred in 2017 when my opponent brought forward a resolution for the town to pay 100% of the cost of providing benefits to members of council. Both the expenditure increases and the provision of benefits are unacceptable. It's time for a change on Hanover Council. My vision for Hanover and growth in the future, I see the town adding land to allow for in industrial and residential growth and remaining the retail and commercial hub for the area. What is Hanover's largest challenge? Uh, reducing the expenditures Hanover Council has control over. A 21.5% increase over four years is unacceptable. Outrageous Hanover expenditure increases over the last number of years cannot continue. Please vote between October 12th to the 22nd. I look forward to serving you as Deputy Mayor on Hanover Council and Gray County Council. It's time for a change. Thank you. Thanks, Bill. We're now going to be calling on, there's going to be 11 more introductions. The next 11 candidates are running for five council positions. So the, everyone you're going to hear from now is running for the position of town councillor. First up will be Rick Hopkins. Good evening. My name is Rick Hopkins and I am running for re-election. Confident I have the experience, energy and determination to wholeheartedly represent the citizens of Hanover. I remain passionate, I remain passionate and excited to play a part in the decision-making process for the town. My wife Debbie and I raised two daughters in Hanover and I have operated a business for 38 years. Many of my clients reside in Hanover and are quick to show their approval and sometimes displeasure with the decisions of town council. I also volunteer as a, as a Hanover firefighter and it has brought me great pride over the last 24 years. Along with experience, I believe a good councillor must be open to suggestions and be a team player, but most of all practical, which is why I wasn't able to support, uh, support the decision to purchase the Blue Water Radio Building. I felt that this was a tremendous waste of town, uh, town, uh, town of Hanover's tax dollars. My vision for Hanover is that it remain a central hub for the region and to be able to welcome new industry and business, which in turn will provide added employment, which will aid in taking the load off of residential taxes. But therein also lies the challenges we face. The next term a council can expect to deal with expansion obstacles. The town of Hanover is running out of developmental property. It is imperative that before long we find a way to obtain additional land to expand our boundaries. In closing, I would like to say that it's been a pleasure working for you on Town Council. 
and if re-elected, I will continue to work diligently on your behalf, making good, sound, practical decisions. Thank you. Thank you, Rick. Next, we're going to hear from Harold Fleet. Good evening. My name is Harold Fleet. I'm here tonight to ask your support and elect me as counselor for the town of Hanover. I was born and raised in Hanover, and I've lived and worked here my whole life. My wife Heather and I have owned a home in Hanover for over 41 years. I've always volunteered in our community. I've been a director at, with Community Living Heart for 10 years. I served on a number of committees for the town over the past years, and presently I'm on Parks and Recreation Culture and the Planning Advisory Committee for the town. I believe these ex experiences will serve me well as a counselor. If elected, I will bring common sense approach to all decisions involving spending of other tax dollars. I will encourage a council that works with the citizens and listens to their needs and concerns before making decisions on your behalf. I will encourage a council that is open, honest, and transparent in all aspects of decision making. I will support existing businesses, while at the same time look to opportunity to attract new business. One of our biggest challenges is our ongoing border issue to the east. We have to find a mutual resolution with our neighboring municipalities that is beneficial for both parties. We have to be progressive and forward thinking. We need I promote a healthy, active lifestyle, and to do this we must provide programs and services everyone can afford. My vision for Hanover over the next few years is to remain the hub for the area. We need to promote Hanover as an entertainment and shopping destination and promote arts and culture. This will boost our economy by bringing more visitors to our community. I want every resident to feel part of this community and their voice matters. In closing, I'd just like to say, if you keep doing the same thing, you can't expect different results. If you want different results, you have to try different approaches. Hanover has the opportunity this election to have new voices with new ideas at their council table. Thanks, Harold. Next, we're going to hear from Ed King. Good evening. My name is Ed King. I'm a retired high school teacher and I have lived in Hanover for over 30 years. After eight years on council, I feel I have the experience that would be very beneficial in representing the people of Hanover. I have listened, learned, and made decisions that are in the best interest of the residents of this town. Economic development in Hanover is at an all-time high. As this development expands, there is a need for more land. I believe it is important to first explore the best possible uses of empty buildings and vacant lots within this town. For example, would the development of the old John Deathan Baker School be feasible for multi-purpose development such as a combination of residential, retail, and commercial along with some recreational facilities? Or will this building be deemed structurally unsound for renovation instead and a new building could occupy these grounds? New growth brings concerns about the environment. How do we keep from overfilling our landfill site? We must also continue to offer enough green space for healthy lifestyles. As well, we want all citizens to benefit from economic growth. So we must look for ways to facilitate affordable housing and services that allow our older citizens and all citizens to live as independently as possible. A healthy economy should ensure a good balance between reasonable taxes and appropriate services. Economic growth should allow for Hanover to continue to be a place where people can live, play and work whether that work be from home or in, in nearby locations. Was that the bell? Okay, thank you very much.
I'm not ringing it, Ed, but one bell at, with a 15 second warning and then the two bells is when the microphone gets cut off. So thanks, Ed. Next, we're gonna hear from Steve Fitzsimmons. Good evening. It's been my pleasure to represent you the last four years. As council's representative to the Hanover, Bentick and Brandt Agricultural Society Board, it was fantastic news when that organization negotiated a $18 million expansion with Gateway Casinos at Carriage Hall, a project that will create 75 new jobs. Mayor Patterson and I were both very proud to be part of that process and assist on behalf of the town in any way possible. In terms of financial benefit to Hanover taxpayers, an increase in visitors will amount to a large increase in revenue for our 5.25% share of the slots revenue. I believe that could mean as much as 500,000 additional dollars per year for our community. As Council's Hanover Library Board trustee, I was happy to arrange a fundraising initiative between the library and Hanover Canadian Tire as part of their yearly hanging basket sale. That initiative has raised over $10,000 in the last four years for the library, money they invested in resources for their kids program. My vision for Hanover includes significant upcoming investments in infrastructure. The Hanover Fire Department building will soon need replacing. The Hanover Police building has five to seven years shelf life left in it, and the Hanover Public Library has a huge lack of space, currently storing thousands of books elsewhere, and with laws changing, we'll have to reduce the height of their shelves, thereby diminishing even further their capability to serve the public's needs. Your next council will need to develop a comprehensive plan to deal with these complex issues. My vision also includes a brand new hotel facility locating in Hanover in the near future, something I believe you could see in the next four year term, as well as a much needed community hall. My track record the last four years shows that I will do what's right for Hanover taxpayers and represent your interests with honesty, transparency, and integrity. I humbly ask for your voting support this election campaign. Thank you. Thank you, Steve. We're now gonna hear from Brandon Cable. Good evening, my name is Brandon Cable. Thank you very much for coming out and thank you to the Hanover Chamber of Commerce for hosting this event. Having grown up in Hanover, I have a love for our town, the beauty of our community trail system, the connectedness of our residents, and unparalleled recreation services uh, that we're for very fortunate to have. Over the past decade, I've worked for the town's Parks, Recreation, and Culture Department, and I've witnessed the positive impact that recreation services can have for all ages. I volunteer on a number of boards, including most recently the Hanover and District Hospital Board of Governors, and these experiences have allowed me to develop the creative and critical thinking skills that are needed as a modern counsellor. The world is rapidly changing, which requires us to think differently. The status quo will no longer be adequate for our town to remain progressive and innovative. I was reminded of this challenge this past weekend when I was reading a copy of The Post from January of 1975. An election had just been held, and Mayor Alan Fisher had just been elected. Alan Fisher said, We are living in a changing world. What was good enough yesterday is not sufficient today. The achievements of the past should be only the steps towards our future. Alan's comments ring true as ever, as the newly elected council in 2018 will be tasked with forging a path towards the future that sees increased employment, affordable housing for young families and seniors, broader reaching recreation services, and stronger partnerships with our schools and our hospital. As a councillor, I'm committed to responsible spending, long-range thinking, attracting new industry to town, a community-focused approach that recognizes the volunteers, uh, service clubs, and residents and their contributions to our town, and finally, increased transparency of council so that each hand of our resident knows where their tax dollars are going. It is time for our council to be more diverse, to be far-sighted, and to explore new avenues to grow our economy. I hope I can count on your vote to bring a fresh perspective to Hanover Council. Thank you. Thank you, Brandon. Next, we're gonna hear from Warren Dickert. Thank you, to the, <clears throat> thank you to the Chamber for arranging this event and for all who have taken the time to come out here. My wife, Deb, and I have been proud citizens of Hanover for the last 28 years. 
We grew up in this area, we raised our family here, and this is what we call home. Our early careers had us live in the Waterloo region for 14 years. This allowed us to gain a great perspective on how nice it is to call Hanover home. My dedication to this town is evident in my actions. During my time here, I have volunteered many hours to minor sports, been a Rotary Club member, served as a director of the Chamber of Commerce. I deliver meals on wheels, served as chairman and treasurer for our church, and assisted at the food bank. I also served many years on the Hanover Police Services Board, and am currently on the Hanover Hospital Board and the Planning Advisory Committee. My 37-year career with Union Gas gave me great experience in dealing with all aspects of management. Now that I'm retired, I have the time to serve on town council. My vision for Hanover is a growing town. We have enjoyed very positive news in the last little while. Long-term care facility, electrical contacts expansion, Whiteman Communications. However, this rate of growth is not sustainable as our industrial park is nearing capacity and development land is scarce. We simply must find a way to expand our borders. So my vision for town is also what I see as our greatest challenge. Another challenge I see is controlling taxes. I have spoken to several friends and we have compared tax bills over the last four years and there has been a significant increase in the general levy portion of our taxes. Of the people I've spoken to, it runs from 17 to 21 percent. We need to find ways to keep our taxes to a minimum. In closing, I would be, it would be a great privilege to represent the residents of our town, and if elected, I promise fiscal responsibility, open communication, community growth, and a basic common sense approach to the business of running the town. Thank you. Thanks, Warren. Next, we're going to hear from Hazel Pratt Page. Good evening. My name is Hazel Pratt Page, and I'm seeking your vote for my second term on Hanover Council. I've spent most of my life working and raising my family in Hanover, and my husband Robin and I own four rental units in town to provide an affordable, safe place to live. I'm a recreational assistant in long-term care home in Hanover, a place where I've served and cared for the residents for over 31 years. I'm past president of the Gray Bruce Labor Council and presently a member of the Four County Labor Market Planning Board, and the role of that board is to fund the Employer One surveys and to collect employment and job trends data for the region. I've also volunteered with the Habitat for Humanity Hanover Build, and this is my 10th year delivering Meals on Wheels. Through my labor movement experiences, I have a strong sense of social justice and believe in being a voice for those who need help. I have found serving my first term on council interesting, challenging, and rewarding. There are many layers to running a town efficiently, and I have found that working in collaboration for common goals benefits our community. I'm chair of the Park, Rec, and Culture Advisory Committee and sit on the DIA, which is Downtown Improvement Area, Dietrich, which is Downtown Revitalization Improvement Committee, and CIP, which is the Community Improvement Partnership. These committees have accomplished some important projects supporting our community. Hanover has beautiful natural parks and trails, facilities and programs that are a regional draw to our community, and amazing town staff who are professional and care about Hanover. Our challenges for future sustainability and prosperity for our town is to enlarge our borders to allow for residential and industrial growth, continue to support and grow our downtown and business community, and encourage development of affordable housing. I'd welcome your vote to continue to represent Thank you, Hazel. Next, we're going to hear from Mike Shears. Good evening, everybody. I'm Mike Shears, and I'm running to be a council of yours for the town of Hanover. I have almost 30 years business experience in our community, and I'm presently vice chair of our Parks, Recreation and Culture Committee, and a member of our Economic Development Committee. Both these groups have completed important milestones this term. I have been a volunteer in our community for many years with minor hockey, 
basketball, soccer, and figure skating, along with others. And I'm a recipient of Ontario's Volunteer Service Award. I committed to continued negotiations with our neighbours in West Gray. Looking at our town boundaries, we will be running out of room for growth in the upcoming 10 to 15 years, and this will have devastating consequences if Gray County lets this happen. West Gray will have a number of new members on October 22nd, and hopefully Hanover's Council will too. We should be able to find ways that Hanover and West Gray can be partners in sustainable future growth. Working together will and should have positive outcomes for both our communities. Now before we go out looking for partners to work with us, we need to get our own house in order. Using our town's financial reserves to buy a building in order to bankroll a failing business is not going to help our reputation of prudent fiscal management. Nor is this council's feeling entitled to receive employee benefits from our residents going to help. We need to be selling ourselves as a responsible, stable partner. Now don't get me wrong, I feel our town is basically well run. This has been the result of stable building blocks from Hanover's past councils. They have made substantial investments for the future that we now enjoy, but under the basic rule of living within your means. The few large decisions that this council has made as a result of living large, as some would say, and I would think it's safe to say that councils of Hanover's past would be disappointed. I promise you I'm committed to do the right thing, no matter what, and make decisions that will benefit the community as a whole, but not myself personally. Thank you. Thanks, Mike. Next, we're going to hear from Ed Hotchkiss. Good evening. I'm Ed Hotchkiss. You know me either through real estate or maybe from some bad acting on this stage with Hanover Community Players. I've also been involved with the Literacy Council and I'm a library volunteer. This is my first time running for public office. So many years ago, I was elected president of a ratepayers association in Markham. I've worked for multinational corporations at the level of director, operated a family farm in St. Vincent Township, and practiced real estate here and in Owen Sound. I first came to Hanover in 1989 when I was looking for a farm and was immediately impressed with the town. So it followed that many years later, when it came time to move again, I chose Hanover and I have no regrets. We have a great town with facilities that are exceptional for a town of this size, and the town is in good shape. Taxes are high, but not unmanageably so. So what's the problem? About three years ago, I read Hanover's strategic plan, and I was struck by the number of challenges we face and the lack of results in addressing them. I became, became particularly concerned about the lack of new business in town, and the low level of youth retention in the community, which is leading to an aging workforce and reduced skill levels. This is why I chose to, work, to run for council. It seems to me that much of the problem stems from our small size, and that is why I'm proposing amalgamation with West Gray. We also need to provide local post-secondary education in order to keep our youth in the community. As a starting point, I'm proposing a bus service to Georgian College in Owen Sound. I look forward to your questions. Thank you. Thank you, Ed. Next, we're going to hear from Peter Hambly. Uh, good evening. Thanks for coming. It's nice to see such a good crowd, especially considering that the Leafs are playing tonight. Um, I'm just completing my fifth term as councillor, 17 years. I was twice appointed to fill a vacancy, which was flattering, and then I've been elected three times. As a former banker and certified financial planner with a math degree, my strong financial background has been useful on council. My wife and I have lived in town for over 30 years. We raised our daughters here. My office was on the main street of Hanover for much of that time, leading to a good knowledge of local issues. I am committed to fiscal prudence, trying to balance that against the needs to support growth and maintain our infrastructure. I look for pragmatic solutions that uh, need our attention. I serve on council to give back to the town and its citizens now that I have time. When, surprisingly, the issue of giving benefits to councillors was raised last year, I spoke out strongly against it, I voted against it, and I worked internally to get it reversed, which happened shortly thereafter. 
My vision is to help Hanover prosper by working to give the town more room in which to grow, which we've heard quite a few times, improve our road network while reducing speeding, maybe try to make better use of our regional airport, and get more benefits and usage from Launchpad without increasing our level of funding. Our biggest challenge, as you've heard, is the boundaries lack of space for the town. Our infrastructure is in acceptable shape according to an independent asset management review, but it was noted that we haven't been spending enough and we need to increase our spending on infrastructure. You've heard a lot of comments on taxes. The county had some pretty low increases, so we took advantage of that to increase our infrastructure spending. If you take out a one-time infrastructure increase, our overall blended increase was pretty close to inflation. I look forward to your uh, support. I hope I can get it, and I'll be happy to answer some questions later tonight. Thank you. Thanks, Peter. Last but not least, we have Dave Hawking. Thanks, Ryan. I'm a husband, father, grandfather, born and raised and attended school in Hanover. A teacher for 31 years, 11 years as principal of JDSS, recently retired from real estate for 12 years. I've been a three-term counselor in the town of Hanover in the late 80s and 90s. My volunteerism is as follows, fundraising chair for three capital projects, the Aquatic Center, PH Center, and Medical Clinic. I've been a member of the Hanover Hospital Board for 10 years, three years as chair, and I recently chaired the community rally for the successful application of the CT scanner, an awesome experience. I'm currently vice chair of the Hospital Foundation member of the Economic Development Committee and member of the Grey Bruce Habitat for Humanity Board. I was so pleased to notice the town has joined other municipalities in recognizing that cultural resources play a significant role in growing the local economy and secondly, enhancing the quality of life. The launch of the cultural plan occurred last Saturday. I envision that the cultural plan will serve as an impetus to establish Hanover as a strong promoter and leader of the arts. As an economic driver, I envision businesses associated with the creative economy relocating in Hanover because they tend to gravitate to communities with a strong arts influence. My concern is like many others, is how we sustain growth if residential and commercial development comes to a screeching halt. Yes, folks, we're going to run out of land. There are only 171 lots left in the town, and in approximately 24 years, we're going to be out of land. We need to deal with this in the next term of council. Your support for Dave Hawking as councillor is sincerely appreciated. Thank you. Okay, we're now going to move to individual questions. We have lots from the audience, so we're trying to group them uh, with some themes. To let you know, it's what well, it was given to me randomly. The first question is going to be put to, in this order, Dave Hawking, Mike Chers, and Peter Hambly. And the question for you guys is, uh, how willing are you to work with our neighboring community, and what does that look like to you? So I'm going to call on Dave Hawking to come up first, then Mike, then Peter to answer that question. Dave, if you're ready. And sorry, it's now one minute for all of these answers going forward for the candidates. Uh, neighboring uh, communities I'm going to refer to as West Gray and uh, Brockton. I think the previous councils have tried repeatedly to work with West Gray and uh, as the old saying goes, it takes two to dance. And unfortunately, I think uh, they've run into some roadblocks. That doesn't mean you're gonna throw up your towel and uh, not continue. Uh, I, th I think the issue with land is crucial and we've got to establish a, a good working relationship with Wes Gray. I think maybe we have to just show a little more muscle than we ha currently have and uh, state our, our, our preferences. Because did you notice, know that 1% of the land mass of Gray County is Hanover, yet we have 17% of 
labor force. So we do need to expand and move to more partnerships, but at the same time, make sure that we look after the people in the town of Hanover. Thank you. Thanks, Dave. Same question for Mike. Yeah, I think are basically, we can't do a whole lot with Bruce County because it's a different county. I mean, we can certainly go at the airport like we do now, we have a partnership, but our only hope to have any kind of growth is with West Gray. We, you know, I work in West Gray. I actually grew up in a little place called Crawford, so I have a little connection there. I'm not far from here. Uh, I've been at Interforce for almost 30 years. I actually worked with Kevin Eccles, the maybe future mayor there, or fourth or fifth term mayor's wife for a number of years. So I have a connection with a lot of members on the council now, the two to the left, and hopefully at least three more new ones. But yeah, we have to have a timeline with it. I mean, we did have meetings I've seen through the Economic Development Committee with the county explaining, you know, our, how much we're worried about what future growth will be. And I don't really know what came out of that. But uh, we have to play hardball, like Dave said. You start with a plan, do it in short bursts, and then have a plan in the end to go somewhere else, whether it be the MPP or the county council. Thanks. Thanks, Mike. And I should let the candidates know the first bell is at the 45 second mark, so you still have 15 seconds when you hear that bell. And now I'll turn it over to Peter. Thanks, Ryan. Good question. First of all, I sit on three committees that interact with other, other towns. I'm on the landfill committee with Walkerton, the Smart Disability Transportation with eight towns, and West Terrio Power with eight. This had given me some interactions with the other communities, which is helpful. I'm very committed to working with our neighbors to the east, which I think is the only way to go in the short term. Uh, you may recall we just spent two years trying to do a police amalgamation and we're cut off at the 11th hour. Um, as I said earlier, the space is a real issue. Uh, West Gray's got a new council coming as well, quite a few new people. I hope that with the new group we can work together. We did sign an agreement for services and stuff, but unfortunately not much has, has, has come of that. Um, but um, it is something we had to do. I think it's the most important issue for the town and it will have all my attention. Thank you. The next question is going out to four candidates. It's going to be in this order. Harold Fleet, Ed King, Brandon Cable, and Steve Fitzsimmons. Uh, it's a two-part question. So it uh, came from some citizens. I understand the Aquatic Center is closed every weekend throughout the summer including long weekends. Uh, do you now think the Hanover Pool should be open and available on weekends for families to enjoy? Uh, and a second part, uh, related but not, is there's no splash pad in Hanover uh, for the hot summer months. Do you think Hanover should have a splash pad? Um, and where do you see that going? So the question is about the pool hours and potentially having a splash pad. And I'll call on Harold first, to Harold Fleet, to come up and answer that. I think the bottom line is when it comes to hours at our aquatic center, it comes down to um, cost. I think we have to look at how many swimmers, how, many, how much the pool's being used, and what hours are put out there to these people when they go swimming. If you go swimming at six in the morning, there's only three swimmers, it's not worth the time to have staff and uh, lifeguards and that there. Um, the second question about the splash pad, I think the town's been through this many times. Uh, the problem with a splash pad is the cost of running the splash pad once it's built. I feel that uh, we have a splash pad to the, our neighbors in Walkerton have a splash pad. We have a splash pad, an indoor splash pad, or an existing pool. Um, personally, it's the cost of operating the splash pad. I, uh, I think we could raise the money to build the splash pad, but I don't think we could afford to run the splash pad. Thank you. Thanks, Harold. Ed King. Well, in a little uh, difference to Harold Fleet, uh, I feel the uh, aquatic center should be open on Saturdays. I've all often questioned it. I can't see why in the summers when it's uh, so hot out that kids are out there and they're playing around in rivers that we don't have. So I would, I would promote having our aquatic center open on weekends and long weekends. Yes, there's a cost. I think we can find it 
uh, I think it's part of the town to service our youth and other people to use that. The splash pad, uh, I think, is something we can look at. Uh, a number of volunteer agencies have come to us. Uh, the Lions Club, uh, different different organizations have said, you know, we'll help raise money for it. There's one in, in uh, Walkerton, there's one in Southampton. I think that brings people into town in the summers, and I think it's a great idea. Thanks, Ed. Brandon? <clears throat> Uh, thank you. Um, having worked at uh, Parks, Recreation and Culture for uh, many years, um, I, would, I would echo that uh, recreation services are very important for our town. Um, I agree that it's important to look at uh, the usage um, of our facilities, but I think that it's hard to determine um, how much they're being used when they're not open. Um, for people that, that have young children, it is hard um, when, when you're not able to go to our local uh, recreation facility um, on the weekends and you have to go to other communities and so considering that we have a building right here I think it is something that we need to explore um, the additional costs cannot be that large considering the fact that we already have the water that's being circulated chlorinated etc as far as the splash pad um, I do think that it is something uh, that we do need to look into uh, we need to look at how much it's going to be used and so we have to do an extensive uh, survey to determine uh, the use on that um, my concern would be um, the cost as was said and I think I'm looking at the regulations coming forward. So if um, in the future um, the splash pad would have to have um, staffing there uh, by lifeguards, that would be... Thanks, Brandon. And now we'll hear from Steve Fitzsimmons. So with the uh, Aquatic Centre hours, I've certainly uh, listened and heard a lot of people talk to me about that at their door, that uh, they would be in support of having some limited hours in the summer to allow the young kids to have the, the, uh, the pool open for those hours. Um, it's a cost thing. They obviously study uh, what times and dates uh, people are most uh, at the pool, but I think in a limited way during the summer, uh, I think there's, there's merit to that. On the splash pad, um, we've certainly had a number of uh, different organizations come to town council and discuss that they would be willing to fundraise to get a splash pad, but it's really not that simple. We can get the splash pad, the, fun, the funds raised for that. It's really about the cost after the fact. The cost that we have chosen up to now in not adding to your taxes and, and you carrying that burden. So um, we have one 10 minutes to, you know, in Walker and away. So I would not be in support of that. Thanks, Steve. <clears throat> so for our final four candidates, in this order, Warren, Dickert, Ed Hotchkiss, Hazel Pratt-Page, and Rick Hopkins, we have a specific question that uh, can lead to a bit more general depending on how you want to answer it. Uh, we've had a few people ask about what your thoughts on Gray Gables are and if you're in favor of this facility. Uh, and just how it relates to initiatives of, of arts and culture and tourism to the Hanover area. So do you support Grey Gables? So are you in favor of this facility? And how do you see it, uh, that or in general, fitting in with arts, culture and tourism in the Hanover area? And I'd like to call on Warren, Warren Dickert first to answer that question. I, I got to admit, I'm a little confused by the question because Gray Gables is a long-term care facility, and I don't know how we're tying that in with the uh, parks and culture of our town. Um, as far as Gray Gables, I can answer my thoughts on that. We do need an upgraded facility. Uh, you know, it's been talked about a lot at the county. They've decided to locate that that home in Durham. Um, you know, uh, again, being a county issue, I don't know all the ins and outs of it. But uh, I do know that the county as a whole needs long-term care facilities, so I certainly support any upgrades they can do to those facilities. And I'm sorry I can't answer what the correlation is between uh, Gray Gables and Parks and Culture. Thank you. Call on Ed now. Yeah, I'm in favor of keeping and uh, upgrading Gray Gables too. Um, I think we need to uh, 
expand our facilities and not reduce them for uh, seniors. As for arts and culture, I, I don't see the connection between the two, but um, I'm all in favor of arts and culture, and I think we're, we're about to come out with a plan, uh, and uh, I'm way behind that. I, I think we, we should be pushing for a lot more culture in this town. Um, particularly if we're trying to bring people in or businesses into the town, we need a more cosmopolitan type of um, facilities in town so that uh, people can enjoy the same things they have in the cities. We don't have enough of it by any means. Thank you. Thank you. We'll call on Hazel now to come and then Rick. Thank you. In regards to Gray Gables, I, because I work in long-term care, I feel that keeping Gray Gables open, as well as building a, a new facility in, in Durham for Rockwood Terrace, is the way to go. And uh, also in the news in the recent month or so, uh, Gray County has uh, determined that they want to bring in a management company to run these facilities in, in Gray County, and I think that that is the wrong way to go because the management company is there to make money, so I, I don't agree with that. Uh, arts and culture in our town is really um, engaging and uh, creating a larger footprint in the region as a tourism draw, and uh, since I've answered those two, I want to go to the pool. <laughs> okay, I'll skip to the, uh, the splash pad. I've seen a wonderful splash pad in Windsor where they built their splash pad using the power of the pool, so I feel that that little sort of wading pool would be the... Thank you, Hazel. And if we can call on Rick Hopkins. Thank you, Ryan. I really wish I would have got one of the other questions to tell you the truth. Uh, Green Gables. Uh, looking at the crowd, Greg, looking at the, looking at our panel here and out into the crowd, why wouldn't I think that we're going to probably need a lot more nursing homes in the area? Right? So, uh, speaking personally on myself, uh, it would be nice to to keep everybody's nursing home open. You know, we all care about our, our elderly and we want to keep them near to us. Unfortunately, it comes down to cost. Can can we afford it? Um, apparently, we can't. Good news, Hanover is getting a new nursing home, and we got awarded 20 more beds. Um, that's all I will leave with that. Uh, the Parks and Rec question, I'm, I'm just not even going to go with it. Uh, I would like to speak on the, the, the splash pad, please, if you don't mind. Just answer me one question. Why does Hanover have to build everything? Why does it have to be our tax burden all the time? Walkerton has one. Let's go there. Thank you, Rick. We're now going to move on to the question that's going to be put to Selwyn Hicks, then Bill Roberts, then Mary Winkler, and then Susan Patterson. And the question is, how do you see Hanover expanding its industrial land base so we are in a position to accommodate large industry? Uh, and I would like to call on Selwyn Hicks first to come up and answer that question. So thank you. Um, expanding our industrial land base, well, um, that's a matter of making sure that Hanover is well positioned in the new official plan which is being uh, put together by the County of Grey. By the way, in the last week, that official plan hit uh, a major milestone and I can tell you that we've been advocating quite strongly, the Mayor and I, uh, to make sure that Hanover's needs are well protected in that official plan. That plan says, and language is included now and I'm happy to tell you, that Hanover is a central uh, uh, primary settlement area. And if we focus on primary settlement areas, we actually help all of Gray County because we're actually protecting precious agricultural lands by focusing that development in the primary settlement areas. That language is in there now, which will help us uh, hopefully to expand the land that we need in the future. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you, Selwyn. Uh, Bill Roberts. Well, the expansion of the industrial land base, uh, again, we're back to discussing 
agreements with West Gray or annexation. Um, we're pretty much at capacity in the industrial park. Uh, accommodating a large industry. Um, our bread and butter lately has been on a small in industrial expansion, so I'm not sure if we're going to get a large industry. Uh, if one came, it'd be nice to have the land, but I don't see them coming right now. Thank you. Thanks, Bill. Now, Mary Winkler. I'd like the uh, splash pad question. <laughs> um, I agree with Bill. It is about land, and we have to partner with West Gray, our neighbors. Um, we have to think about how those, that partnership is going to be. So we have the land. We have been um, utilizing small industrial um, organizations, and maybe that's what Hanover will do as we go forward. Um, again, the partnerships and small industrial base I think are the way we need to think about things. Thank you. Thank you, Mary. And now we'll call on Susan Patterson. So the first thing we are doing is investigating land north of the Saugeen River, still within Hanover boundaries, for phase three of our business park. Everyone is aware phase two is almost at capacity, so where do we go? We stay within Hanover until we can uh, reach out and work with our neighbours. In 2013 and 2014, agreements were signed, the Charter and a Development Agreement, and uh, the studies have been completed to expand to the east and there comes a time when both camp councils have to have the buy-in and if that isn't there then we need to look at other options but first on the block will be north of the Saugeen River there will be a cost but phase three is uh, going to happen for us thank you Thank you. So we're going to move back to questions for council and I appreciate you guys are obviously, despite I think a few people being nervous, doing an excellent job and uh, it is worth saying if you feel you've answered the question, you have the allotted time to speak on whatever issue you want within, within your given minute and some of you have done that and that's, uh, that's perfectly fine uh, if you think you've answered the question put to you. So we've had a bunch come in from the crowd that I'm going to suggest are they deal with safety. Um, a few reference the community trail. I'll say as a topic, it's uh, in general the safety in the community, but specific to the community trail. Um, they, t they talk about tent city. Uh, yeah, there is reference to uh, drug addiction and mental health, um, tying it in, but to, to try to ask the question broad enough to, and this question is going to go, sorry, to Harold Fleet. Warren Dickert and Ed King. Uh, the question is, uh, there's many people that feel that the trail or that there's areas that are unsafe and if elected, how would you address the problem of what's been referred to as, uh, you know, safety issues on the trail or a tent city? Um, and again, not to go too far into it, but it refers to drug addiction and, and mental health concerns. So it's a safety question. And I'd like to call on Harold with a whole minute, to, lots of time to answer that. If he could, though, come up and speak to it. Thanks, Harold. I live along the trails and uh, my wife Heather and I use the trails quite often. Unfortunately, there are people in our community need a place to live, and unfortunately they find that spot along the Saugeen River, which is really sad. And maybe it comes down to housing or find a place for these people to live. They struggle with alcohol and mental illness, which is a sickness, and it's hard to police those trails. Our police are busy enough, they're strapped, 
to get back there to police and keep an eye on those trail trails are almost impossible. Um, for our firefighters, uh, Rick can probably relate to this. There's been a couple fires back in the trails. The firemen don't know where the fires are. The smoke's going one way or the fire's somewhere else. It's an accident waiting to happen. Anyways, it's a tough decision. I think it comes down to finding a place for our homeless to live. Thank you very much. Thanks, Harold. I'd like to call on Warren. Yes, the, the, uh, the trail safety issue is something that you do hear quite often when you're out talking to the residents. Um, I have spoken with, uh, with Chief Nolan in town, and I know that uh, together with the uh, Parks and Recreation Group, they're at least they're working on a plan. They're going to try and put mile markers up there, so if you are out on the trail, at least you can identify where you are if you need to call for help. They need to increase surveillance on there, and uh, hopefully once the police service gets back to full staff, they will have the, uh, the required people to get out there and do some surveillance on the trail. And of course, what Harold touched on, the, the whole mental health issues that are around the town and uh, being on the hospital board, it's a significant issue there. It's a real draw on our resources. And as a town, we need to work with the provincial government to increase the, uh, the mental health treatment facilities that are able to help with a lot of these issues. Thank you. Thanks, Warren. Now I'm going to call on Ed King. I don't think there's much more I can add, but I think uh, more consultation with uh, Police Chief Noel will be an important fact. I've talked to a number of people that won't even go down the trail anymore. Uh, they won't send their kids alone to the trail. I think that's a travesty when we ha have such beautiful trails. So I think the first thing is, is uh, I also agree with the homeless issue in our, our town. Uh, we have to do something for affordable housing. I mentioned that in my first talk. But uh, I, think, uh, I think the police are aware of it and hopefully more surveillance will definitely help that situation. I might also add that this situation could uh, also get worse with the new cannabis situation with drugs and uh, that issue surrounding the legalization of marijuana. So we have to move quickly to instill some uh, things that will help the situation and alleviate what's going on. Thank you. Thank you, Ed. The next group, just so you're aware, I'll read the names before the question. It's going to be Dave Hawking, Brandon Cable, Hazel Pratt Page, and Peter Hambly. And the question, uh, there was again several from the audience, so I'm gonna kind of group them. The, the general question is, will you be moving to have a compensation package and then a couple others questions along that vein was uh, are you in favor of a proposal of the proposal to provide pensions and benefits to council members um, and if so or if not why so I'd like to call on Dave Hawking to come at answer a question basically about compensation for council Thank you, Ryan. People, if you know me, the, you know my answer is no. Uh, I believe uh, councillors uh, put their name forward to serve the town. They get a stipend. They uh, receive uh, uh, assistance when they go to conferences. I don't think we're in the business of supporting uh, benefits. And um, I'm glad the town reversed that decision uh, when, they, uh, when they did. If I could go back to the trail system, um, I heard in the news the other day that the mental health is getting um, quite a concern in Hanover. In fact, the, the hospital board is now hiring a security team just to look after um, people who come to the hospital. So it's, it's an issue in our town. It's an issue that uh, I think as a group, hospital, council, other agencies, we need to get together. We need to help these people because it is an illness. They need our help. Affordable housing is another suggestion that I think council can look. Thanks, Dave. Uh, Brandon? Um, to begin with the um, question about compensation package, um, I think that responsible spending is very important. 
Um, so it's important that uh, we look at where our tax dollars are going. Um, I would not be in favor of uh, council members having a compensation package. Um, as I said before, I worked at Parks and Recreation for a long time, and there's a lot of part-time staff members there uh, who work for the town that don't have um, a benefit package. So I don't think it's fair. Um, there's a lot of people that live in town that don't have a benefit package, so it's not fair that council members would. Um, that's why I'm pledging, um, looking at responsible spending, pledging to not uh, submit meal, accommodation, or travel expenses if elected to town council. I think it's important that uh, the strip and that, that council members are paid is used, and if I decide to go to a conference, uh, that I should have to pick up the expenses that are um, that that accommodate that. Okay. Thank you, Brandon H Hazel. All right. So on the subject of uh, compensation, uh, I have benefits and uh, a pension with my workplace. I only supported the discussion just to get things going about talking about compensation as in the stipend. Uh, I think it's important that uh, we need to discuss these things. We don't need to be an, uh, you know, argumentative. We should always work together and talk about stuff. Uh, and then I'll pop back to the safety on the trails. We definitely need to do some collaboration with Canadian Mental Health, with our, uh, our social agencies. And uh, I don't think just policing them or tossing them out of town is the answer. So we really need to support these people and, uh, and help get them the help that they need and the housing they need. Thank you, Hazel. And Peter? Thank you. Not in favor of any changes to the present compensation that councillors get, and certainly no to benefits. Uh, we had an independent compensation and benefit review just all that lo long ago, and I recall Ryan Craig was the one who gave the presentation to council about it. As I said earlier tonight, I voted against the benefit issue when it came up. Um, we don't pay councillors even for independent meetings. We just get the one basic salary, and that's all it is. So I think it's fair where it is. I'm certainly not here for the money. Just a quick comment on the radio station. We bought a building. Some of the proceeds were used to fix up the building. I would expect that within two years we'll be selling the building and there's a very good chance, if not completely realistic chance, that all of the funds will be recovered. So I think when the dust is cleared, that's going to be a wash. Thank you. Thank you, Peter. Um, before we move on to the next question, I'll give the order here. It's going to go to Ed Hotchkiss, then Steve Fitzsimmons, then Rick Hopkins, and then Mike Schurz. Uh, I'll actually give you a second to think. I'll give you the question so you can think about it. I have a little announcement here. Uh, it came from a local business. Um, we've been th thinking about moving our location, uh, and this goes to the general question, as there's very little parking near our store. It's in reference to 10th Street and 7th Avenue, which most in town, I'm sure, will know. There is a vacant lot on that corner. Could the candidates come up with a solution for the parking issue, I would say in general, but specific to that location? And if you could also comment on the potential use of that vacant lot for parking. But before I get Ed to come up, um, if everyone, we appreciate all the questions. If anyone wants a pen and paper to submit more questions for the last rounds. If you want to put your hand up, we can come around with a pen and paper. We'll come around to give it to you and then perhaps when you're done we'll let, we'll let them go through these, these answers and then we'll get you to put your hands up again to come collect them. So we have one there. Does anyone else need a pen and paper to submit another question? Okay. Okay, thank you. So. Let me know if you need it said again, but I'll, I'll ask Ed to come up and basically comment on the parking issue uh, in general, but specific to the area near the vacant lot at 10th Street and 7th Avenue. I believe you're referring to the lot on 10th Street and 7th. Yeah, yeah not 10th Avenue. Yeah. Um, what should we use it for? It used to be a hotel, right? I don't think it can be a hotel anymore, um, and it's, uh, 
It's not really big enough as a parking spot, though it could be used for parking. Uh, when I last inquired about it, I think the town owns it and the town wants something like 900,000 for it. So it's, it's kind of a lot of money and that's probably uh, going to deter a lot of possible uses. So uh, I, I guess it's up to some commercial, someone, uh, some commercial uh, opportunity to come along and buy it and, and work through it. It's kind of expensive to have as a parking lot. And I don't know that we need parking right there, but okay. Thank you. A call on Steve Fitzsimmons to come up and answer that. So I think one of the issues there could be uh, some more enforcement of uh, people parking there all day. There's certainly some bad offenders. I think we all realize in that particular area. Um, Mr. Hodgkiss mentioned 900,000 and we never paid anywhere close to that for that property. But uh, you know, I can't confirm or deny whether there might be something afoot with that property that we can't really talk about yet. But uh, you know, you might hear about something uh, in the fairly near future there. Um, if I can go back to the benefits package that we was asked earlier, um, I voted against the benefits package. I was the most vocal voting against the benefits package, and I think a lot of people in this room know that. And I was the only member of council that voted against the increase in salary for the compensation review that was done at an arm's length because I thought the, the water was muddied pretty heavily, and I thought our tax dollars could be used much more wisely. Thank you. Thanks, Steve. Uh, Rick Hopkins. Uh, thank you. That's that's a good question. It's uh, it's going to stump a few people. It, it's an area of town that is really unserviced by parking. Um, how do you fix it? I'm not really sure. We we certainly can't use that parking lot for for uh, for parking or that uh, that empty space for parking. Um, as Councillor Fitzsimmons has just mentioned, there has been some recent interest in that property. We can't go into it because it's during an in-camera session. I don't know how strong it is. It would be great if it was because there is some money that is owing left on that property that owes back to us, uh, some back taxes and some money we've had to clean it up. Um, could we utilize uh, some of the parking in behind the police station? Could you utilize some of the parking in behind food ba uh, f food land? I, I guess you could. People will have to walk a little play, uh, piece. I'd like to get back, I'm not gonna get a chance to talk about amalgamation, but I'm gonna talk about that when I come back up again. Thanks very much. Thanks, Rick, and I'd like to call on Mike to come up. Well, it sounds like there's a secret afoot, so I'm not sure what I could say about the empty lot, but what I can say for my minute is, I guess something like that is you have to set up the environment for business in town. And I mean, somebody said here they want to have a hotel in four years. Well, unless they're going to build it, how the hell are you going to have a hotel here in four years? You have to have the environment, somebody interested in the business of building a hotel, and they have to be able to make money. That's the way it is. I mean, the town doesn't bring in business. I mean, we have a marijuana plant we talked about for 12 years, that's still empty. So not saying that that was wrong bringing that in, but it's kind of hard to hype up stuff and then nothing happens. So the only way it's gonna happen, if we set up the atmosphere for business to be comfortable to come here, which is lower taxes, a good workforce and a good place to live, and then keep that community running for them to stay. Thanks. Thanks, Mike. We're going to go to a question now for the deputy mayor, candidates for deputy mayor and mayor. The order is going to be Selwyn Hicks, Susan Patterson, Bill Roberts, and Mary Winkler. Uh, the question is, can you comment on lowering the property tax load on small businesses by bringing business property taxes in line with residential taxes? So I'd like to call on Selwyn to come up first to comment on the property tax issue of small businesses. Wow, one minute, huh? So, uh, I, I'm not in favor, let me just be uh, brief on that, I'm not in favor of aligning um, uh, commercial taxes with, uh, uh, with property taxes. Um, on the tax piece, you've been hearing a, a number of um, numbers thrown out, 17, 21%. I'm a lawyer, in my business, you go on the stand and you tell the truth and the whole truth. The whole truth 
is that you don't just refer to the levy. It's the levy times the assessment that gives you your tax rate. Over the last four years, it's been about 2% per year. That's the truth and the whole truth. If you look at simply the levy, then you can come up with all kinds of numbers. But you need to know the whole truth. It's been about 2%. By the way, our taxes today, if you're going to look at levy, is less than, uh, than it was in 2005. Thank you. Thank you, Selwyn. Uh, Susan Patterson. Thank you. The formula for commercial tax rate is not set by the town of Hanover, nor is it set by the county. It is set by the province of Ontario. So it is the same in all municipalities. The difference is the assessment. So if your property tax in downtown Hanover is higher than other municipalities, that's because your property is more valuable than other properties in other municipalities. Thank you. Thank you, Susan. Bill Roberts. I have to agree with uh, Susan there that the, uh, the uh, taxes for the uh, small businesses, uh, there's not too much we can do and they're, they're paying a higher assessment because they are busy in Hanover. Just back to uh, Deputy Mayor's point, uh, levy times assessment doesn't equal the tax rate. It's uh, assessment times the tax rate equals the levy. Uh, the levy is the taxes, the expenditures, the Hanover raises or asks ask for you to pay for, and uh, those are up 21.5%. Thank you. And now Mary Winkler. Yeah. Mayor Patterson has advised us that we can't change uh, the levy um, for business. And um, I've talked with a number of people um, when we talk about their home assessment, and that has increased. I've seen bills, tax bills, for the last four years that have been 17 to 21% increase over the last four years. So, we'll have to look for some efficiencies, I think. Thank you. Thank you, Mary. We now have a question that is going to all the candidates. So, uh, it's, it's, do you think our main street downtown is healthy and successful? Uh, if so, why? And if not, what would you do to change that? So if you can specifically answer whether or not you believe it's healthy and successful, and then if so, why? And if not, what would you do? And I'm going to call on Ed Hotchkiss to come up and answer that question first about the health of the downtown businesses. Yes, the question was, do, do you think our Main Street downtown is healthy and successful? If so, why? Or if not, what would you do to change that? Okay. Uh, I assume you're talking about the, uh, the question is referring to the, the health of the retail sector rather than the, the street itself. Um, I'm just reading the question. Yeah, <laughs> sure. Yeah, yeah. I don't think overall our retail section is, is that, um, that strong. Certain parts of it are okay, uh, certainly the service sector may be, but if you look at, for example, the restaurant sector, Frankie's is closed again, right? Frankie's is vacant, and that has to be a bellwether for the restaurants in this town, and it's now been closed twice in the last 10 years. Uh, if I go into restaurants, in the downtown area, very often they're empty. 
So I don't think the restaurants are doing too well. One or two of them may be, and you know which ones I mean. Uh, the stores, food stores are doing okay, I guess, but the average retailer in downtown, I don't think is doing well. I don't think they're going under, they've been around for a few years, but they're not strong. Thanks, Ed. Calling on the other Ed, Ed King. Well, I think when you're in a town with Walmart, you have a tough time competing. So I think it's up to the town and the council to help all our people in those towns and retails to do well. And we've done that. We provided the facade. We tried to fix the fronts up. Uh, we try to make an attractive downtown. There's more work to do, but we're working on that. I think the other thing uh, we can do is bringing in restaurants. That's hard to do. Uh, we have the uh, slots who are building. They're going to bring more people into town. I think you're going to see more attraction to our downtown area. I'd like to just uh, finish off with one thing that was talked about. It's the Blue Water Radio. And the town owns the building, not the Blue Water itself. And an independent assessment was done on Blue Water Radio. We paid 246000 The assessment now is 346000 The town has made $100,000. Thanks, Ed. Peter Hambly is next. Main streets have changed over the last 40 years, as we've all observed. I was a banker. I had a lot of Main Street retailers. The merchant sector is hurting. It will continue to hurt, not just because of Walmart, but Costco and Amazon and all those things. It's not going to be 1955 again. You notice half of our downtown is service industries, banks, credit unions, lawyers, tax offices, the whole bit. On the whole, as Ed said, we've done some uh, downtown improvement. It's worked well. But it's going to be a struggle, and I think it's going to be continue to be a struggle. We might look at the DIA rate. Uh, we can't do much else about the costing, but we will continue to do downtown improvement and beautifications and help that. Parking is an ongoing review. If we could get the big trucks off the main street, that would help as well. So there are quite a few things to do, and but it does need our support. Uh, next is Steve Fitzsimmons. I think our, our downtown is healthy and successful in parts. Um, and I think from a town perspective, we've played our part. We've contributed to downtown revitalization efforts. We did that very innovative uh, investing in facade improvement program that really helped. And, and lots of lovely touches around town. Lots of these benches and nice, nice uh, features that, that just make our downtown attractive. I do think there are cases downtown where some buildings are owned by people that really don't have any interest in being successful, that are from out of town and using them for tax write-offs. And I know from a town perspective, that's very frustrating where we see a, an empty building that could be something much more successful and it's just sitting there. Thanks. Next is Mike Schurz. Yeah, I mean, the downtown, like Peter said, it's getting full of service industries, banks, lawyers' offices, the mom and pop businesses. Unfortunately, they're not having anyone to sell to. I think eventually they close and they just close up shop. They're not, they're willing to work for less than minimum wage where the new generation isn't. Um, I would say with the businesses downtown, the buildings like the old byway building, I know some municipalities do have somewhat regressive tax system. I'm not saying 100% agree with that, but that's something you can look at to say that their taxes go up as the years go by that no one rents it. That's something to look at. Um, I would say as far as downtown goes, the future of downtown might be residential one day. Maybe you want to have people build, not build houses, but make some of those buildings actual houses on the bottom too. If you can't have a, a store in there, why have it empty? So 
just get a little bit more innovative of uh, ideas what we can do downtown. Thanks. Thanks, Mike. Dave Hawking. Thanks, Ryan. <clears throat> Excuse me. Well, we, definitely we have a strong Chamber of Commerce, very supportive of the downtown, strong BIA who work with the Economic Development Committee, of which I am a member. We work together to look at ways that we can Im improve the downtown. Uh, I, I mentioned the cultural plan. I, I think that's the secret. When we signal to the rest of the area or to the rest of the province that we have a strong influence in the arts, Businesses associated with the creative economy, these are the small businesses, they're going to move to our town because they believe in a town that has the arts is a town for uh, people in the, in the digital economy. There are some pockets, but I think we should emphasize the positive. I think the facade program has been excellent. If I'm on elected to council, I want to continue that and I definitely want to support the businesses in our downtown sector. Thank you. Thanks, Dave. Warren Deckert. I believe that the downtown core does look healthy. However, I don't think it really is healthy when it comes to a business perspective. There is a, a lot of work needs to be done to uh, find new businesses that can go down there. Some of it's been mentioned, maybe it's residential, maybe it's service. And I think as the town, we need to do whatever we can to assist with that transition because it is going to be very difficult for them to be a retail hub within the, uh, within the community when we have our large box stores on the outside edge. So uh, whether it's residential or whether it's uh, service, I think that's something we can do. Accessibility is an issue in some of the stores and uh, that is also something that we uh, need to look at. Thanks, Warren. Hazel Pratt Page. Thank you. As a member of the DIA, I feel that we have some very successful businesses downtown. We've got uh, uh, quite a diverse number of businesses, whether they're service, whether they're retail. Uh, we do have a few vacant buildings, and certainly I agree with the uh, with Mike about the. Uh, you know, making it uh, the taxes harder for those vacant ones, especially ones that are um, vacant for years and years. Um, I also feel that we need to improve safety downtown. It's the big trucks rumbling through. Uh, we don't have a safe place for people to bike. So if we had some bike paths and improving accessibility in the sidewalks so that they're smoother for our aging population. Thanks, Hazel. Brandon Cable. Is our downtown healthy? I think it's a work in progress, and I think that we're doing really well. I, I appreciate what uh, the current council has done uh, to try to improve the downtown. We certainly have challenges in the downtown area, parking being one of them, um, food, restaurants, but I think we need to look at what is the draw and how are we marketing that? Um, how are we bragging about the businesses that we do have in downtown? Where are the signs that say, come downtown to see this business and this business? If we could advertise the strengths that we have in our downtown core, that may help. And I think that's something that the town could do. I think we need to look to the future, think about how we could utilize this, the, uh, the services that we already have. We have a beautiful heritage square. Could we offer more programs and more things there so that we can draw people to the downtown core? Because if we can get more people in the core, it's obvious that they will shop um, locally in Hanover. So if we can get more use of Heritage Square, we have a beautiful bandstand over there, why can't we use it? We have a farmer's market on Saturdays, we need to be advertising these to get more people to come into our downtown. Thank you. I, I should have said this question is for the 11 count candidates for council we have a different question for the four for mayor and deputy mayor but uh so i apologize if i wasn't clear on that but uh still going with the question uh about downtown rick hopkins thank you really good question um 
it's a real slippery slope. We try to promote our town and we try to progress and we try to grow a little bit further. And what we seem to do is we try to grow, we, we grow our East End and we try to bring in big boxes and AAA tenants and such. Um, I'm not so sure if that's the right angle we should be looking at. Maybe we should be looking at trying to incorporate some of these older stores with, you know, I'm not saying you're gonna put a Costco or, or a Home Depot downtown, but you know, why does a Boston Pizza have to build a brand new building? Why couldn't they go in Frankie's with some enhancements to that? Uh, downtown Toronto uses uh, older buildings to bring infrastructure or, or, or other businesses and such into to uh, flourish and, and, and look after that area. Why, why couldn't we do more of the same here? Um, as far as the taxes, I, I'd like to talk about that. Uh, me as a councillor in the town of Hanover, when I pass the budget, I'm not really concerned about what other agencies uh, charge or what their increases are, what impact does. I'm worried about the... Thanks, Rick. Harold Fleet. I believe that's everybody for this. I feel our downtown looks a lot better. Um, I'm not sure they're convinced we have a lot of foot traffic. Um, I feel promoting arts and culture and entertainment in the downtown area would be a benefit to our downtown core. Um, I had the opportunity to run into a gentleman in the Desborough area oh, two or three weeks ago, and he actually owns the building that Rick has his barber shop in. And he's bought the bike shop and the business beside, so he owns property in Hanover. And all he had was praise for this town. He said, what a great town to deal with, what great people at the town office to deal with. And he lives in Newmarket, and he said, not what a better place to buy property than Hanover, and this gentleman, gentleman's from Newmarket. So let's hope we see more people from that area come in and buy property in Hanover. Thank you. Thank you. Moving to uh, the next question for the candidates for mayor and deputy mayor, the order is going to be Mary Winkler, Selwyn Hicks, Susan Patterson, and Bill Roberts. Uh, the question is, what do you see as the town's biggest success and biggest failure in the last five years? And if you have time, how would you have addressed it? And I'll call on Mary Winkler to answer that question first. I had my answer for that last question and it was really good. <laughs> um, the biggest success. I think the biggest success and biggest asset that we have are the people that live here. Uh, they are our biggest asset. The volunteers and the people that live here make the town tick. And we need to work together so we can continue um, to be a good place to live. The biggest failure? I'm not sure that I like to speak in those terms. Um, I think there's uh, room for improvement in our taxes, in some of the decisions that have been made. Um, I, uh, I think that we need to consider, investigate, and make our decisions very carefully on how we move forward. Thank you. I'm going to ask Selwyn to come up. To all the candidates, we're moving good. There is going to be another question for everyone. We may have time uh, for a one minute closing. So again, the candidates weren't told that. So, but with all the different issues and you're all, all getting to not necessarily address it. You, the minute can be used for whatever you want, but we're gonna aim for everyone to get a minute to speak and close however you see fit, time permitting here at nine o'clock. So sorry, Selwyn, I'll go back to you. Thank you, so you remember last election, the big issue uh, was these user fees, you remember that? That's been addressed. In my view, that's one of the big successes that we've had in the last uh, term. The challenge still remains, and I, I, I emphasize, the relationship with our neighbors with respect to 
achieving some more developable uh, lands. I want to turn quickly to the, the issue of housing, if I might. Um, three years on a waiting list for affordable housing is unacceptable. Clearly, we have work to do, particularly in Hanover and Owen Sound, because those are the two popular areas that if you're poor, you want to be there because you don't need a car, you can walk to services, you can shop, that sort of things. But that presents particular challenges for those two communities. I'm proud of this council because it set aside $147,000 to address housing. And next term, hopefully we'll have a plan about using that. Thanks, Selwyn. Uh, uh, Sue Patterson. So we've had some really, really great successes in this community. We've had increase in growth in our businesses with XL Door, Electrical Contacts, the expansion with Gateway, $18 million being in invested in this community. We've uh, a new senior high school is underway. We've got a Tim Hortons that's coming, two Tim Hortons in a community. We've got six subdivisions in various stages of uh, development. They're all going forward. So the other thing that's really important is we are investing in our youth with Launchpad. It is an investment in our community when we invest in our youth. It provides our youth with skills and connects them with our community. They may go away to further their education, but they may come back because they've been invested in in this community and treated with respect. What can we do? Keep doing what we're doing. Thank you, Sue, and I'll call on Bill. I guess um, the biggest success in the last five years, uh, we've kept the small town atmosphere and we've also kept our police department, which is, uh, I think, a success because a lot of places are looking at amalgamating and going OPP, so I think that's good. Biggest failure in the last five years, I would say, is the empty marijuana plant uh, that continues to be empty and hopefully one day will be full since the rules are changing, but we'll see what happens. Thank you. Thank you. It looks like we'll do, we're going to go back to breaking the council, the candidates for council up, three different questions as we start it with, one more for the mayor, deputy mayor, and then everyone will get one minute to use as you see fit. We'll call it a closing. Uh, the first question is going to be for Warren Dickert, Brandon Cable, and Hazel Pratt. And we had a few audience questions relating to relating to a permanent home for archives and the museum. I only have one in front of me, but uh, uh, the question for you guys is, what options do you propose? Sorry? Yeah, no, there, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna expand it a little bit if it was on here. So, as you would be aware, for, there was a, from the candidates at the library, there is a serious lack of space in the library, over 2,000 items stored in archives, section of the Civic Center. There was a consultant's report tabled in January of 2016 that recommended a number of options to address the space constraints. constraints sorry. There was no follow-up by council on that report. What would you plan to do in this upcoming term of council to address the space constraints in the library? So if I could call on Warren Dickert and then Brandon Cable and Hazel Pratt Page to uh, address that, and if they have time, anything else? Well, that's uh, to address the space constraints in the library. And I actually did go to the library, uh, had it explained to me how regulations are going to require them to have all the books lower and more accessible for everybody, and, and that is an important thing. Um, my concern though is, you know, we, we have a big concern with taxes and to say that we can go out and build a new building somewhere and expand it as much as would be needed would be, would be difficult at this time. If we can grow the town the way I'd like to see the town grow and we can increase our tax bases, perhaps a few years down the road, we would be able to accommodate that. 
unless we have a, an organization out there that comes forward with a building, maybe a, a church that's no longer used could be turned into a museum or something of that nature and we could use it for these purposes. Thank you, Warren. Brandon? I, I would have to agree with uh, Warren. Um, I also went to uh, the library open house that they had a few weeks ago, and it's a wonderful opportunity to go um, and see all the different services that the library offers um, in Hanover. Um, certainly, um, by reducing um, the shelving height, um, more books will have to be stored. And it's my understanding that a few thousand books that uh, the library currently has are in uh, storage at this point. Um, I would see that um, for the current time, uh, the library may have to remain in the space that's available. And we can look at in the future how, how this building changes and adapts in the next five years to look at whether there might be expansion space uh, moving forward. Um, but at this point in time, I would think that uh, the library building would remain as is. I think it's a great asset that um, you can go and ask library staff for any book that's in the collection and they will get it from the archives for you. Thank you. Thank you, Brandon. Hazel? Thank you. Uh, that, the question about archives, I was thinking you were meaning the, uh, the heritage archives, which are sort of museum that's uh, stored in the basement of St. Matthew's Evangelical Church. Um, so back to the library and the space constraints. This town has really been wonderful at fundraising for the PNH Center, for the medical clinic, all these things that uh, consultants would say that we can't afford. So I would really like to see a new library, possibly on the, uh, the Queen's Hotel corner. Anyways, uh, then we would have space for all of this. There are so many programs that are being used in, in the library uh, for all ages, and I really think that it does need to be expanded. And if I heard the suggestion about moving archives to maybe an, an old church or something that is a building unused, then that would be great. Thank you. Thanks, Hazel. The next question relates to policing. It's going to go to, in this order, Steve Fitzsimmons, Ed Hotchkiss, Harold Fleet, and Rick Hopkins. Um, comments were all over, but there was certainly a lot of comments about policing um, opportunities to uh, make better use of the policing. Uh, one was summed up, though, uh, about the yearly tax bill to a specific person, but the point being, it appeared to, uh, into this opinion, half of the tax dollars it, go to the Hanover Police Service. Um, whether or not that's true, certainly a large part of the budget does. Uh, with drugs, crime, thefts, basically with crime, with crime still being, uh, with there being crime issues in Hanover, uh, what is your solution to try to resolve this issue of the high cost of policing and yet the crime that still does exist? So, Steve, if you could come try to tackle that policing issue in the minute, that would be great. Thank you for the question, and that, uh, that que the person that posed that question, they're not very far off, actually. Policing amounts to 38% of our entire budget. Um, as you know, we were looking at uh, possibly amalgamating West-West Gray to see if there was some cost efficiencies there, and that didn't work out. Certainly, I've heard at your door um, that a lot of people would like us to get a costing on OPP moving forward. Um, and of course, we know that uh, we are the hub good, but we are also the hub bad, and we draw people that uh, cause problems in our community from other places as well. And um, that, in, that in, you need enforcement, you need people on the ground. With OPP, I feel like it's more reactive, uh, where you call them and they come in, in large part, whereas we can have people here in you know, a minute or two to our location. So I think that's important, but uh, I think the public is demanding that we look further at policing. Thank you. Thanks, Steve. Ed Hotchkiss. I am very much against bringing in the OPP. I think we should retain our own police force. 
and I think we should have amalgamated with West Grey as far as the police go. Of course, now I'm proposing that we amalgamate with West Grey, period, which would solve the problem also. Um, and I, I really can't see how we can not uh, bring together two police forces and not save some money by doing it. We, I think in both cases we need a new police station, so we have to build one anyway, and uh, we should just build a joint one somewhere between Hanover and Durham, and uh, that's what I think. Thank you. Thanks, Ed. Harold Fleet. First of all, I support local policing. I think it's very important for our com community to have a local police force. But we have to look at our options. If we can't afford to have local policing, we need to look at cost savings. We have to look at OPP. I'm not in favor of uh, amalgamation with West Gray. Uh, we did that with Walkerton. It didn't work. As far as our tax dollars go towards policing, you get what you pay for. And if you want your town protected, you pay the dollar. And we have great police officers in this town, and they do the best of their ability. There's a lot of paperwork that has to be done. There's a lot of de dealings with mental health and the trail issues, and it's very time consuming. So I consider ourselves very lucky to have local policing. Thank you. Thanks, Harold. Uh, Rick Hopkins. Thank you. Um, municipal policing in town of Hanover, it's the only way to go, in my opinion. OPP policing, they do a great job of policing the highways, and their ERG teams are wonderful when you need them. What we need in this town, you, everybody's concerned with crime, and we've had a lot of racing. It's came to the board uh, table a couple, couple times. A lot of people running around this town like they're going crazy. Um, if, if, if you want to see that escalate, bring in OPP policing. Um, our, our cost of policing. Um, uh, I need more than a minute, Ryan. <laughs> it's went on for years. Uh, we, we struggled coming back from Hanover, uh, amalgamated with Walkerton. We struggled coming back from that, uh, getting our, 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 our structure back in place and the cost of doing all that. Uh, we, we had some personnel problems. We had disbandment of uh, dispatchers, which our severances went through the roof. Who knew we'd have to pay somebody a whole year's salary You know, by the time we, we paid for their severance? And that's just one person. Um, I believe that within the next couple of years, really all you need to do is elect me for two years, because all I want Thank you, Rick. Uh, the last question is going to go in this, as it relates to the launch pad. Ed King will go first, Mike Schur second, Dave Hawking third, and Peter Hambly uh, fourth. And the question is, uh, we've had uh, several people ask about the launch pad. Um, essentially the message has been from the comments of the crowd that it's a unique and admired feature in Hanover. Uh, it seems to be uh, positive comments about it, offering a place for youth to learn and employable skills. Will you maintain the financial support as it continues to grow? And, and how do you see launch pad developing into the future? So Ed King, I'll turn it over to you. Well, as our mayor has stated, Launchpad has been a fantastic thing for our town. I think for our youth, it's so important to keep the retention of youth here and bring them here and work and learn skills. And I think if we don't do that, there's going to be a migration of kids out. Um, many of us have kids who have already gone and don't come back. Very few that happen. So Launchpad is a great a great thing. They're developing different things all the time. They have welding, they have kitchens, they're developing new programs for kids. So I think uh, for us to pay the hundred thousand dollars a year, it seems steep, but I think it's a fantastic way to keep our kids here in town. Thanks Ed. I'll call on Mike now. And I'll just agree with Ed, I'm also full support of Launchpad, I've had a tour there a few times, we've had meetings with uh, economic development there, um, I mean obviously the town's invested a good chunk of money into that building and the program, um, 
And if you want use retention, that's basically how you got to start it. And especially when you look at it, it also helps out a lot of youth that you know maybe aren't super aggressive about finding out what they want to do in life. And you have a lot of different aspects here with good computers, with welding, with a huge kitchen. Um, so I'm 100% in support of Launchpad. A quick note about the police. I agree kind of with everyone's comments, but one thing everyone has to keep in mind is don't get so tribal when it comes to money. I mean, I would say look for the best thing for your buck. Right now it's the Hanover Police, but always keep your mind open. Thanks. Thanks, Mike. Dave Hawking. At first, I want to shout out to our local police. I support them 100%. When I was principal of JDSS, they were there immediately, so local policing is the way to go. Uh, on the launch pad, uh, as, a, as a former principal of a secondary school, we always need to look at options for students who need uh, another experience. I support the, the initiative, but I think the initiative has to grow. We have to reach out to partnerships. We have to reach out to the county. We have to reach out to other social agencies as, a, as a, uh, an envelope of all those services, we can make this a, a happening spot. We can put Hanover on the map as a, as a town that, that recognizes student needs, youth needs, and uh, I will support it as your counselor and work hard because my previous experience as principal of community education for Gray County, I did a lot of the same things with working with other agencies that I think this one is the secret for success. Thank you. Thanks, Dave. And now I'll call on Peter Hamley. Well, first of all, with former Mayor Maskell in the room, I'd be afraid to say anything else than I support <laughs> Launchpad 100%. But I was um, behind that initiative right from day one. I've been impressed by it. Um, I think the present level of support can be maintained. I, I'm not too enthusiastic about raising it. I would like to see, and they've done a really good job of getting donations both in money and in kind as they expand the operations. I'd like to see that get expand some more, work with the community colleges and uh, other agencies. I understand the new senior school isn't going to be as big as the present one in terms of shop classes and stuff like that, and I think the launch pad will become even more needed as we go forward. So I uh, will continue to support it. Okay, so we have one more question for the candidates for mayor and deputy mayor, and then we're going to go to what I will call a closing, but to give all the candidates a, a heads up, just to keep you on your toes, we'll uh, it looks like well, the timing is good, so everyone should have a minute and 30 seconds. It's really up to you, but just to let you know, any, any issues that you weren't able to comment on and wanted to, that will be your, your opportunity uh, to close any way you want. Um, we'd ask it to, to maybe also answer what makes you most qualified or certainly qualified enough to be on the council in whatever capacity you're running at, but you'll get a minute and a half. So the bell will go off at 1.15 and you'll have your last 15 seconds. Before we get to that, the last question for the candidates for mayor and deputy mayor, and it's going to go in this order, Bill Roberts, Mary Winkler, Selwyn Hicks, and Susan Patterson. It's what will be the one most important, it says first, but we'll just say what will be the one most important item for you to tackle uh, as part of the next council. So I'll turn that over to Bill, the most important item to tackle as part of the next council. Well, as I've said uh, numerous times tonight, the most important item will be the uh, reduction in expenditures at the town level. As I've said, 21.5% uh, over four years, and that's the tax levy portion of the Hanover bill that Hanover Council is responsible for. That needs to come down, so thank you. Thanks, Bill. Mary? I support Bill in his comments. We need to look for efficiencies and look after our dollars. 
I also want to tell you that I have had a newfound interest in the health and safety and accessibility of our sidewalks. <laughs> and so that will be something I'll be looking at. Thank you. Thanks, Mary. Selwyn Hicks. Thank you. So I've mentioned this already. One word, land. We need more developable land. And that's going to be, in my view, the most important issue, issue for our next uh, council. Did you know Hanover uh, occupies a footprint of less than half of 1% of the land in Gray County, and we produce about 17% of the jobs. Now imagine if we could expand that just a little bit to 0.9 of 1%, or maybe 1% of the land in Gray County, what we could do in terms of uh, providing jobs. Along with that, I think a, a, a heavy focus on affordable housing, that's got to be a priority. And addressing mental health issues that, uh, th that exist I'll leave it there. Thank you. <clears throat> Thanks, Selwyn. And I'll call on Sue Patterson. In the upcoming term, the first thing I want to see done is the orientation of all council members to bring them up to speed on what the priorities are and what our challenges are. Then I want to see a refresh of our strategic plan so we know where we're going and in what direction we're going to go. And the third thing, we're going to expand our boundaries. And that's it. Thank you, Sue. Um, we're going to move into the closings again. It's up to a minute and a half. You'll be warned by the bell. Before we go there, um, I'd like to, to make a comment that um, if everyone could put their hands together for all the candidates in, in one minute, uh, I think, um, you know, I'll speak for myself and I think speak for the room to say we have a lot of great candidates up here and regardless of which way the outcome comes in a, in a couple weeks, I guess, uh, I think the, hand of ta the town of Hanover will be very well served. Uh, appreciate how everyone conducted themselves tonight. It is very tough to answer questions out of the blue and with short time constraints. And I think they all did a fantastic job. So could we give all the candidates a big round of applause? We are now moving into the closing. So again, it's up to you. We would ask that uh, you close with whatever you want. Let us know what makes you qualified and any issues that you want to address, feel free. We are going to, in random order, deal with the councillors first, then the deputy mayor finishing both the mayor positions. And so the first to close will be Hazel Pratt Page if she wants to come up. Thank you. Well, thank you everyone for coming out tonight. I have a passion for this community and would like to continue to work collaboratively and respectfully to help Hanover prosper. I'm honest approachable and energetic, and appreciate your vote to represent you on Hanover Council. Thank you. Thanks, Hazel. Next up will be Ed King. One uh, issue that was left out tonight, and I, I was writing different things down, was seniors and I wanted to mention I didn't want to leave them out the right now the fastest growing group in Hanover is older citizens some people might say this high number of older citizens will be a challenge for the town but I believe a large population of our older citizens will be a great benefit for our town the services and merchandise that this group will need will bring jobs and creativity to the town I believe the age-friendly committee that I'm on is an important partner and support in ensuring that seniors have access to the resources and the best environment possible to maintain a healthy and happy lifestyle. Any improvements in such things as walkability through Hanover 
Hanover will benefit not just older citizens, but all residents of Hanover. Thank you. Thank you, Ed. I'd now like to call on Peter Hambly. First of all, I'd like to echo Ryan's comment. I'm very impressed by what I've heard tonight. It's, uh, you can hardly lose whomever you choose. You know, I love this town. We moved here randomly in 1986 because I was a banker and I went where they told me. In 1999, I quit my very good job at the bank and because they wanted me to move and I didn't want to move and I got lucky the credit union came to town. But in any event, I worked hard to stay here and I'm really glad I did. At that time, I was Chamber of Commerce president and I actually hosted this meeting twice in my Chamber of Commerce career. It's kind of interesting to be on the other side of the fence. Uh, as I said earlier, I have served five terms. If I get reelected, you'll get someone with um, experience. I think I've got a proven level of competence and uh, notwithstanding, um, we'll call it age factors, I am still full of enthusiasm and full of beans and I'm really looking forward to running for another term. You will get a high level of integrity, which is in my mind the most important thing. And one thing about campaigning, I'm not into signs. I don't really like visual pollution and there certainly are a whack of signs out there. Uh, just remember that the behaviors and attributes that people need to get elected are completely different from the behaviors and skills you need to become a good counselor. Thank you. Thank you, Peter. Warren Deckard. Again, thank you for everybody coming out. It's a, it's a great opportunity to be able to speak to a group of people like this. Uh, my talk, when I'm talking with the people uh, around town and they talk about different things that we need, uh, splash pads, whatever the case may be, I like to use the word or the, the phrase, play well with our neighbors, because we do need to play well with our neighbors to the east, to the west. We need to play well with them when we're going to go out here and try and get land to allow us to grow. So we need to keep that in mind as we move forward. Taxes are confusing, and we've heard that tonight. There's been a lot of different versions of things. I guess I urge everyone to look at your own tax bill and, and you need to draw your own conclusion as to uh, what you understand and what you don't. I simply looked at how much money I take out of my pocket and that's the numbers I used because that's really what I could only go by, my tax bill and what I take out of my pocket. I do look forward to the opportunity to serving as a, as a councillor in Hanover. It's a great town. I want to work hard for it and I appreciate any support you give me in that, in that uh, venture of mine. Thank you. Harold Fleet. Well, I guess I'm the really real thing. I'm a Hanover boy, born and raised here. My father was a milkman. My father was a father-in-law was a milkman. Hanover was the furniture capital of Canada. Those furniture factories closed down, but this town did not give in. This town grew and went on. We are so lucky to have the services we have in this community, and the little things we have to complain about are very small. I consider myself very lucky every morning when I wake up and go to my job in this town. I've worked at in 45 years, so to everybody out there, we are the luckiest people in Canada. Thank you very much. Thank you, Harold. Uh, Steve Fitzsimmons. I'm a Hanover transplant, but uh, my love affair with Hanover started when I was a kid. Uh, my parents uh, raced harness horses at Hanover Raceway, and I came here on many Saturday nights to, to, to get acquainted with Hanover Race here, and, and I fell in love with the town. And who knew, 25 years later, I would end up marrying a Hanover girl and, 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 and coming here. And uh, so I fell in love with her first, and then um, I fell in love with Hanover when I got here even more than I did as a kid. And I got involved with uh, minor hockey here. As a, it's a passion of mine. I think you know I do the Guelph Storm games and have for a long time. And I wanted to help that organization, and I was able to in the long term with the, uh, the help of a lot of other great people that worked with me there. 
And that led me here to council to want to help our town succeed in a much greater way than I was able to with minor hockey in a small sort of pocket. And I think our council did a lot of great things this term. We didn't always agree. Sometimes I voted against things um, that I didn't agree with because at the end of the day, I'm not afraid to stand up for Hanover taxpayers. I'm honest, straightforward, hardworking, and you can count on me to look out for your best interests. And I would appreciate your vote. Thank you. Thanks, Steve. Ed Hotchkiss. I'd like to reiterate what Ed King said. Uh, we kind of omitted talking about seniors tonight, and they already represent almost 30% of our population. I'd also like to see that grow. It's not just great to have seniors here, uh, for our own, you know, building uh, a good community, but it's great for business also. We should be bringing in these seniors' homes and uh, strengthening our whole seniors' uh, facilities. One thing that's uh, adjacent to that issue is the, the shortage of doctors, and we didn't mention that tonight either. Uh, and it's uh, a pity that just a week ago, the uh, committee that's supposed to be bringing us doctors was uh, dis dismantled and uh, I think you know there may be a reason for that it may be to do with this election but I hope we're going to reconvene that committee as soon as uh, the new council is appointed because we sure don't have enough doctors still there's still a three-year waiting list so uh, those two things go together in a way anyway apart from that uh, I'm new to this game and uh, I'm going to do my best to serve you if I get elected, and I hope I do. So uh, thank you very much. It's been a pleasure. Thanks, Ed. Mike Schurz. Well, I want to thank you for coming tonight, and I'll give you a little more about myself. I'm in the sales business and I've done so for almost 30 years at the same place out at Interforce, which is Danzer now. And I spent my career basically doing a lot of negotiating, dealing with a lot of people from a lot of different places. And with that skill, I think I'd be a good member of council, especially since we're gonna to have to do a lot of negotiating with Wes Gray. And I already have somewhat of a base there. So again, I wanna thank you for coming out. You have a decision to make to keep the status quo or change the way we've been doing things in Hanover recently. And I respectfully ask for your vote. I've met a number of you at the door and that I've been doing a lot of canvassing, trying to lose some weight. And feel free to contact me with any questions. Thanks. Thanks, Mike. Dave Hawking. First and foremost, I'd like to echo Harold's comment. We are the envy of all the other municipalities in Gray County. So what can you expect if you vote for Dave Hawking? A vote for Dave Hawking as a municipal councillor will be one who will not only be fiscally responsible, transparent and accountable, but one who will listen to the ratepayers. A vote for Dave Hawking is a vote for someone who will foster a sense of deliberate thought, a sense of respect for different viewpoints, and a sense of cooperation with the ultimate goal to make Hanover the place to be. Finally, a vote for Dave Hawking is a vote for experience. I've worked for 45 years in a variety of different experiences. One I was just thinking this morning, Hawking's Red and White Grocerteria, a little pup carrying 50 pound bags of potato. And a vote for integrity. Finally, I respectfully ask for your support and your vote. Thanks to the Chamber, thanks to Ryan, good luck to all candidates and have a great evening. Thanks Dave. Uh, Brandon Cable. When I graduated from Queens a couple of years ago, people asked, what do you think that you're going to do? And, and when I said that I graduated as a teacher, people said, well, you'll never find a job doing that. 
Um, and, and luckily, we, we have great employment um, in our area. And I was fortunate to find a job here and to come back. I really think that Hanover is the place to be. I think that youth that grow up here, they find attachments, their family is here, they have history here, and they will come back. We have great programs uh, through things such as the launch pad, through parks and recreation. Our, our town really has a lot of amenities um, for being so small. Diversity is important, and I think that it's important that we bring new perspectives, um, and that new perspectives uh, bring new solutions to the challenges that we face. And so I hope that um, as you vote um, between October 12th and 22nd that you will look at uh, diversity as part of your ballot. I will be someone who is responsive to your needs and suggestions. Uh, I'm only a call away and I will be, uh, make sure that uh, we get your questions answered. Think about what you want the town to be like for your children and your grandchildren. I think we need to think long term, we look at long term solutions and how can we make Hanover the place that will outlast and be progressive and innovative for 10, 20, and 50 plus years. Thank you. Oh. I would also just like to clarify um, that although the Physician and Recruitment Committee was dissolved as part of the town of Hanover, there is still one. Thank you, Brandon. Last but not least is the 11th candidate for the five positions is Rick Hopkins. Thank you. I, I moved to Hanover in 1975 as a 15 year old. Uh, I went to JDSS and I, I left Hanover briefly to go to school in Toronto. I actually couldn't, couldn't wait to get back. Like we really and truly people live in the best place. We really truly do. I don't know too many places where you can leave your house and you know you go downtown or whatever you still leave the doors unlocked. Come on. Like it is a pretty good place to live. Um, I'd like to talk a little bit on amalgamations. Um, I, I've been discouraged over the years because I've sat on council for a while and I've dealt with amalgamations for municipalities. And as you know, that didn't turn out so well. Um, truth be known, uh, the, the rest of West Grade didn't want us because by the time we blended our assessment, we would have raised their taxes too high. Really and truly, was that it? Or was, uh, was there a few people playing, playing king? I'm not so sure. Um, the good part about amalgamation, so our, our policing amalgamation didn't work as well, and, and, and I kind of figured that going into it. But the good part about amalgamations, and the only ones we can really look at right now, is West Gray. Could it work? It could work. It could work now because they're looking at three new individuals on their on their council, new fresh minds, and I and I, and I believe that we could maybe talk with West Gray. Amalgamation of municipality, I'm not so sure. I've been proud to live in Hanover and work for you people for the last 21 years on town council. I would like four more. Thanks. Thanks, Rick. We're now going to call on the two candidates for one at a time for deputy mayor. And first up to give his closing is Selwyn Hicks. You're nearing the end. Uh, thank you, uh, first of all, to the Chamber for organizing this event and to all of you uh, for attending. I also want to thank my wife uh, for allowing me to put my name uh, forward and my kids, frankly, who campaigned in the rain uh, with me and helped me put up signs and that sort of thing. You know, my wife and I moved here from Toronto and you heard that I was Citizen of the Year uh, in Toronto. So I'm not one of these people that hates Toronto. I actually was heavily involved in Toronto and I loved it when I lived there. But when the time came to, to grow our family and we were making some tough decisions, Hanover was the clear choice and we have not uh, regretted it. We took massive pay cuts, by the way, <laughs> to move to Hanover, but we, we love it here. So to all of you, I say Hanover is an amazing place to live and I wanna work together with you to keep Hanover moving forward. I have the experience, I have the commitment, and I have the skill set that you require in an effective deputy mayor. So I'm asking for your support, re-elect Selwyn Hicks as your deputy mayor. Thank you. Thank you, Selwyn. Bill Roberts. Is it uh, too late to bring up about the splash pad yet? <laughs> okay, sorry. 
Again, uh, thank you, Chamber, for hosting this. Um, I've, I have, as I've stated, I have over 31 years' experience in municipal government. Uh, Eleven of those years were here in Hanover, and I've lived in Hanover for the last 22 years. And more importantly, my uh, daughter and uh, son-in-law, my grandson, just moved up here, and uh, unfortunately, the grandson had to go home. He was a little tired, but. Uh, since 2010, I've been retired, and over those eight years, um, I think I've watched and finally made the decision that it was time to uh, throw my hat in the ring. So here I am, and I hope you'll support me on October 22nd for Deputy Mayor. Thank you. Thank you, Bill. And our last two candidates, the two candidates that are vying for the position of Mayor of Hanover, uh, we'll start first with Mary Winkler. I'm slower than some of the people on the stage tonight, but I'm not as old as some of them. I want to tell you that I had the good fortune of presenting to uh, some classrooms at Donview Public School. I attended that school the first year it was open for one year. And I asked the students what they would do if they were mayor. So I got the candy store and I did ask them if I could share their responses. So there's a candy store in our future and there's a big giant bouncy castle in our future a puffball farm because you can't buy those in the grocery store, uh, but also some green space and some parks and playground equipment and a splash pad, oddly enough. So, out of the mouths. Uh, the old adage is it takes a community to raise a child. It also takes a community to look after the old, the sick, the dying, and all points in between. And we need to do that in Hanover. I uh, worked, I have a uh, passion for politics, palliative care, and people. Uh, I have, um, I learned my lessons well at the kitchen table and held my father's hand when he took his last breath in the house that he built for his family. Uh, we ran... Uh, please vote. Please vote. <laughs> please vote for the team that will suit you best. Okay. And please vote for Mary Winkler. Thanks, Mary. And the last person that will speak, well, actually, you know, Aaron, I think will be up after, but the last candidate that will speak tonight will be Sue Patterson. Thank you for coming out this evening. It's great to see so many people with a strong interest in our community and its governance. I am running to serve Hanover to provide good leadership to plan and to build our future. I respectfully ask for your support and your vote. I have the experience, the knowledge, and the commitment to represent Hanover as your mayor. Thank you. I'm going to turn it over to Aaron for the last comments. I'd like to say uh, a thank you to the Chamber for doing everything and making my job easy. Thanks again to the candidates and most of all, thank you all for coming. Uh, Aaron will have the last word, but thanks again for everybody. Uh, big hand of a round of applause for yourself. Thank you. Just a few closing comments. I just wanted to thank um, the Hanover community players. Diane, if you're in the room, stand up. If you haven't seen a show, they have so much talent, so please come out. Thank you for having us in your house. Um, and on behalf of the Hanover Chamber of Commerce, I wanted to thank you all tonight for attending. Wonderful questions. Um, and I have to give Ryan a hand of applause. A round of applause. He did an amazing job emceeing for us, so thank you. And to the candidates, I am very impressed. Well done. There was a lot of passion on that stage, so thank you for all of your input and your answers. Um, you will all make Hanover very proud, so thank you very much. Thank you. 
And last but not least, remember to vote. Have a good night, everyone.
The preceding program was brought to you by Whiteman TV. <laughs>